Hi, I am Dr. Sakim Mansoor and I'm speaking from my channel Learning Anatomy. And uh, today I'll finish with the series of the spinal cord and uh, uh, with the last clinical Brown Sequard syndrome. This is also known as hemisection of the cord. You know, there is the lien like here on half of the side of the spinal cord. This is the cross section of the uh, spinal cord at the thoracic level, suppose this is here, the thoracic level at T10. And uh, though this is not the uh, lateral horn shown, but this is the, you know, representation in a schematic manner. And this side is, you know, paralyzed. We'll show you the causes which, which causes that like this. So it can be a tumor like, for example, or a fracture. So this is a hemisection, brown sequard syndrome. This will produce such symptoms we're going to discuss in the next slides. Yes, so causes of the brown sequard syndrome. These are the fracture dislocation of vertebral column. Then bullet injury. Then an expanding tumor. And the last stab wound. These are the common causes of brown sequard syndrome. Then there are two types, incomplete hemisection and complete hemisection. Incomplete hemisection is common. So what are the clinical features? Clinical features of complete hemisection. Here you see, this suppose it's completely there is the section, all of the, the whatever lies here, the tracks here, uh, which I'm going to, you have already learned from the anatomy in the previous lectures of mine. I am going to mention just names here again. And it is the section and again this uh, hemisection at this uh, T10 level. So generally you see there is a summary what will happen of course the T10 level uh, at the level of the lien at loss of all sensation and the flaccid paresis at level of lien. This is a summary if you know the undergraduates at least this much that is sufficient for their knowledge but I am going to of course uh, give a a uh, bit detail of uh, each and everything, what happens actually. So ipsilaterally, on the same side, what happens ipsilaterally and below the level of the lien, what happens? There would be impaired proprioception, two-point discrimination and vibration, and the joint and position sensation would be lost, and also the spastic paralysis. So what tracks are involved in that? That I am going to mention individually with each and every one and uh, with the help of the cross section. And what happens contralaterally on the opposite side. This is the impaired pain and temperature sensation. It starts one to two segments below the lien. So why this is below the lien? Because here the fibers which are involved here in pain and temperature, of course, uh, they are the lateral the spinothalamic tract. They cross to the opposite side obliquely. So the sensation lost is at the uh, below the level of the uh, this um, lesion. So this, uh, the cr crossing occurs obliquely. Let you know from my lectures, previous lectures, detailed one. This is the fifteenth lecture on spinal cord. So this is the thing, and uh, then this you just to recall very quickly. This is the layout, and from you can learn the anatomy of the. A gray matter and the white matter of the spinal cord from my previous lectures is like uh, this is you know this is the dorsal column and uh, this is the anterior spinothalamic tract this is the lateral spinothalamic tract and, uh, and uh, then is the posterior spinocerebellar tract this is the anterior spinocerebellar tract right so uh, these are the main tracts i'm going to discuss the damage to that and then the Gray matter, this is the anterior horns over here, the damage to that, what causes that? And the spinal nerves, which is being damaged here, over here, and we're going to mention these, what the damage results. These would have made 10 points of that. I'm going to mention in uh, the next slides, coming very soon. Yes, what happens, number one. So ipsilateral lower motor neuron paralysis in the segment of the lien and the muscular atrophy. Here, this is the 
uh, damage to the neurons on the anterior gray column here see the picture yes here yes okay so this damage will lead to the ipsilateral lower motor neuron paralysis in the segment of the lien it's shown you the in the picture the number two dorsal column transection this is the dorsal column medial lemniscus system it causes ipsilateral loss of tactile discrimination ipsilateral loss of tactile discrimination and of vibratory and proprioceptive sensations below the lien then number 3 lateral spinothalamic tract transaction this is the this is this this here is the lateral spinothalamic tract this with the red laser moves over the lateral spinothalamic tract and the lien causes a contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensation beginning one segment below the lien i've already told you that these fibers as they are ascending tracks and they ascend upwards they cross uh, to the opposite side and uh, obliquely one segment above the level of the uh, uh, this uh, site then at number 4 anterior spinothalamic tract lien this is the anterior spinothalamic tract it causes a contralateral loss of crude touch and sensation beginning three or four segments below the level of lien then in the number 5 posterior spino cerebellar tract transection number 5 posterior spino cerebellar this is the posterior spino cerebellar tract so it causes ipsilateral lower limb dystaxia so what is dystaxia it's a minor form of ataxia with the limb movements are uh, uh, not coordinated and uh, there is the loss of uh, quite a lot of uh, movements and then is the anterior spino cerebellar tract anterior spino cerebellar tract transaction it causes contralateral lower limb dystaxia contralateral lower limb dystaxia this is the anterior spino cerebellar tract right this was the you know lateral corticospinal posterior spino cerebellar right sorry this is the posterior spino cerebellar and this is the anterior spino cerebellar you can see this is the posterior spino cerebellar follow the red laser, uh, laser. and uh, this is the anterior spino cerebellar tract and number 7th lateral corticospinal tract this this is the you see this with the red laser moves red, lateral corticospinal tract its transaction causes ipsilateral spastic paresis below the upper motor neuron lien with the babinski sign this was just the last lecture and this is the recorded in uh, uploaded before this one and i have told you what are the upper motor neuron lien and what the lower motor neuron lien and the babinski sign was described in detail with the picture and the what causes the anterior spine in anterior corticospinal tract transaction so this is uh, you know this is the anterior corticospinal tract with this laser you follow that it causes it damage causes minor contralateral muscle weakness below the lien this is the because the 90% of the fibers of this corticospinal or the pyramidal tract are over here the descending tract and 10% are over here so this will cause a minor weakness few fibers are here so continuing with the brown sea quartz syndrome last slide of the this uh, these uh, symptoms the number 9 hypothalamo spinal tract transaction rostral to t2 above t2 so it will cause horner syndrome the right not below the level of the t2 so this will cause horner syndrome which you know from you know, or will know from my subsequent lectures details and in the last ipsilateral band of cutaneous anesthesia in the segment of lien why it happens it caused by destruction of the posterior root of the site where the it enters of the spinal nerve enters the spinal cord at the level of the lien so this is you know this is the site this is the posterior uh, horn 
and here the posterior root of the spinal nerve uh, leaves so this should be damaged and it will be causing the cutaneous uh, ipsilateral band of cutaneous anesthesia at the segment of lien so this is you know these are the symptoms and uh, this was uh, again uh, going to be a, a, a sum up of the my lecture over here with a picture here it enhance the picture you, you here you could see right so here this is the, the you know site of the lien t10 and uh, i already told you what happens at the site of the lien and this is you know coming below this is the ipsilateral side and uh, this shows the damage what are occurring over here so we'll look in great detail and this is the contralateral side right so this is the damage shown here so this is the below the level of the lien symptom produced so this is a, a brief summary as well over here which is mentioned over here and if you know even only this summary that is enough for that that are already mentioned and explained already so thank you very much for listening to this uh, uh, lecture on uh, this um, uh, brown sequard syndrome and the spinal cord and now i'll be uh, coming back to the head and neck uh, remaining uh, topics already there are at least 10 videos uploaded in great detail lengthy one as well so we'll be finishing with that so thank you very much and uh, i will request you to subscribe uh, my channel uh, to keep me encouraged uh, to, uh, to motivate me and uh, uh, like my videos and uh, share with the fellows and uh, friends and families for the support i would be thankful to you i say uh, bye to you thank you very much